thought I would do something a little bit different, make a spontaneous video. I just decided to do this. Came down to my room, which is still not finished. And uh, I'm going to talk about room modes. But before I do that, I want to talk about the previous video where I talked about the room and I showed the stuff that I have done, the stuff that I have finished. And um, looking at the performance of that video, I did better than I actually expected it would, given that the, you know, I changed this channel from woodworking to this new stuff, this audio stuff, speakers and all that. And even though I made a video explaining that and asking people to unsubscribe if they're not interested in it. A lot of people either didn't watch the video or just didn't unsubscribe thinking maybe, you know, be something interesting here. But looking at the performance of that previous video, I could see that a few more people unsubscribed, which is good. <laughs> this is what I need to actually happen. If you're not interested in this subject, uh, which a lot of people aren't, um, the best thing to do is to unsubscribe from the channel. Uh, you'll be doing me a favor and you really won't be missing anything because the stuff I'll be talking about, the stuff that I'll be doing are completely related to speakers and, and, and stuff like this here, acoustics. So anyway, let's get on to talking about the subject of the video, which is room modes and what exactly they are. This is something I had to come to terms with or, or you know, to get a good understanding of before I tried to work with this room and exactly what battle I was trying to fight. Because I think this is where a lot of people fall short is in their understanding of exactly what they are trying to do in a room like this to try to make it sound better. And the biggest issues in a room, any room that's enclosed, <clears throat> which makes means any room are what's known as room modes and those are resonances um, the best way to demonstrate resonance is to take a bottle any bottle that you can do it with and blow across the top of the mouth and the bottle will resonate at a certain frequency that corresponds with the shape and size of the bottle okay that's a resonance. That's that tone that you hear. That's what your room is doing with the sound that's coming out of your speakers. It's resonating at specific frequencies that correspond with the three dimensions that your rectangular room has. Now, if your room is more complex, then it has actually more uh, resonances. It all depends. It's very tricky to calculate, but say a rectangular room, you got the width, you got the length and you've got the height. These are your three primary resonances that you have to deal with or you have to try to deal with. In my case, I have a more or less square room. It's um, say from front to back is 37 hertz, from side to side is 40 hertz, and from floor to ceiling it's around 74, 75 hertz. Those are the frequencies that it's going to resonate at. It's going to, what happens when, um, when sound resonates is that it, it builds up on itself. The waves bounce back and forth. And instead of, you know, just being there, like the other sound waves in the, in the music that you're listening to, they build up and they also create nulls or, you know, places where they're not really that loud. So that is a big problem in a room like this, you know, this size. You get down smaller rooms, it's even more of a problem to a certain degree. Okay, if, you, if you've ever been in a car with a really good sound system, and I'm not talking about the teenager, you know, throwing a couple of uh, speakers in the back seat or something like that. I'm talking about a really well-engineered sound system in a car. They sound amazing in such a small space, right? Everything sounds clean, perfect, right? Or if, or if you've hit, like listened on headphones, same thing, right? The space, you know, it's almost like there's a, there's a region where it's really bad to have a room and that's most rooms that people live in. And, you know, almost all rooms that people set up a sound system in to listen to our home theater. 
the room either has to be really small or really big to avoid these resonances, these room modes. So the way to deal with them, and you're going to hear a lot about this stuff if you're actually like doing a research on this, you'll hear that, you know, some things are simply not effective, you know, like, like, um, acoustic panels, standard acoustic panels are not effective at treat, uh, treating those problems. And the thing to remember is that they're not as effective as some other approaches. They are effective. It's just to a lesser degree. So you're going to kind of treat the problem a little bit, but you're not going to make as much progress if you use a very specific type of solution. Now here in my room, I went with what you see on the front wall, which are deep bass traps in the corners, mainly because that's the place that they would fit. <laughs> it's not because that that's where the bass builds up, even though it does kind of, that's exactly the area that I had to put those things in. So I put them there and across the bottom and, and kind of across the top too. And then I have the diffusers as well. They help to break up the sound. But on the side walls here, I built these panels that are designed to flex. When the sound hits these panels, the panel vibrates. And when the panel vibrates, it's using energy in the sound. So if you have, say, side to side here, it's 40 hertz. That's the resonance. That 40 hertz wave hits the wall like every other wave coming out of the music, it gets part of, okay, part of it gets reflected and it reinforces and creates those problems. Part of it gets absorbed by the panel, the panel's vibrating, and part of it goes through. So you have three things happening there. The one that you really need to be concerned with is the reflection one. And the reflection one is very difficult to treat with um, say acoustic panels, especially thin ones, thin ones won't do it. You need thicker ones. And even then you're just knocking it down. I kind of got sidetracked a little bit talking in technical terms about what I was trying to accomplish with these side panels. But basically what you need to know about room modes is that they are resonances within the room. You don't really need to worry about any other frequencies. Okay. Say my, take my room again, for example, uh, from front to back, that's the lowest because that's the longest dimension and that's around 37 Hertz. You don't have to worry about anything below that, um, say 20 Hertz or anything like that, but you do have to worry about that 37 Hertz and what that produces, because what, th what that does is it creates harmonics, which, you know, will be at, uh, 37 times two, 37 times three. 37 times four and on up, they'll be not as, as strong, but they'll still be there. So you get rid of that first frequency or try to pound it down to the point where it's not that strong. You're going to get rid of a whole lot of other problems that it's actually creating along the line. So you got the 40 from side to side, you got 80, another, you know, harmonic, you got 120 and so on and so forth that you'll get rid of, or you'll diminish to the point where they won't be significant if you can get that first uh, resonance down to the point where it doesn't have as much power within the room. And the very best way to do that is with something that is targeted to that frequency that absorbs that frequency only and is in the right place in the room. However, that is very difficult, first of all, to build properly, and second of all, to locate in the room where it will be effective. So the best approach overall is to use absorption, as much absorption as you can physically get in the room, like deep panels, okay? Um, when I get this room finished, I'll be building two panels that will go on these two opposite walls, they won't be attached to the walls. I don't think they'll be freestanding. I I'm pretty sure I'm going to make them like that, but they'll be big. Like they'll be four feet wide. They'll probably be around five feet tall. 
or maybe four by four and a foot off the floor and they'll be thick as well. So they'll be like six inches thick and they'll be six inches from the wall. So you have to be willing to give up that space <laughs> and you have to be willing to put all the time into the rest of it to get good results, to get results that will really show up in the end.